I was over in Israel uh, as part of my journey up the, the Great Rift of Africa, ended up in Israel. Anyway, the guy there, uh, Steve Horvath is his name, uh, he and I and a couple of other guys are trying to figure out uh, not just why we age, why we don't have to, but is aging uh, truly reversible? And that's what this study suggests, is that it's not just about slowing down aging, but one day we could be 80, but biologically 30. Horvath and others have discovered is that if you read the DNA, and you don't just look at the letters, A, C, T, G, if you look at what's on the letter C, cytosine is called, there are chemical modifications, and those chemicals change as we get older in very linear and predictable ways. And if you use a computer, AI, you can say, if I took your blood sample right now, I could read your DNA, look at those chemical groups on the Cs, and I could say, you are, okay, you're 52, you might be 46 according to that clock, uh, and also I could predict when you're gonna die. The amazing thing about uh, where we are now today with aging, um, and we're right on the cutting edge, so it's great to be able to share this with your listeners, is this clock, it uh, changes on the DNA, right? What I'm saying uh, uh, in my theory of, uh, of aging is that it's not the DNA that we lose. That's the old theory. You know, the old idea that antioxidants hurt the DNA. Yes. Just throw that out for a while, uh, maybe forever. What I think is going on is that the DNA is getting modified and the cell can't read the DNA the way it used to. Okay, that's really important. And so the clock is not just a clock. It's not a clock on the wall. It's also, if you move the hands of the clock, time changes. That's what I think is going on. Can we pause right here for a moment and d explain what you were saying about antioxidants? Well, antioxidants have been the biggest disappointment uh, in the aging field. Um, it doesn't stop you know, 40 million people every day buying drinks with antioxidants in them. But antioxidants have, with very few exceptions, failed to extend the lifespan of any organism. Resveratrol was originally thought to be an antioxidant, and it is a mild antioxidant. But the way it really works, we know this is a fact from my lab, is that it's stimulating the body's defenses against aging and disease. Because it's, it's binding to these enzymes that we work on called sirtuins, and these are the defenders of the body. And you were saying, that, if I remember correctly, you take resveratrol, you take a powdered form, I actually bought exactly what you take, and you mix it with yogurt in the morning, is that, is that how you do it? Yep, what, What's the dose that you take? Well, it probably comes out to about a gram in a the morning. A gram. Yeah. Is it important to take it with fats? Is that why you take it with yogurt? Yeah, yeah, either high protein, which is, uh, you know, a Greek yogurt suffices, or fat. But water, it'll it's like brick dust, it won't dissolve and it okay. won't be absorbed. But a glass of whole milk, maybe, would be okay? Yeah, that's great. But it has to have something to bind to, is that the deal? For sure. Yeah, in, in our studies, in humans and in mice, if we didn't give them high-fat food, it barely got in. There was fivefold le less. If you read the paper, uh, and I, I have, uh, it turns out one of the effects of this treatment was the reduction in the levels of a protein called CD38. CD38 resides on immune cells, and it goes up as we get older. And what they found, one of the biggest effects of the treatment was the levels of this CD38 protein went down. So what is the CD38? This is the main enzyme in our bodies that degrades NAD. NAD is required for the sirtuin defenders to work. So one possibility is that, uh, and I'm sure it's complicated, but one way this could be working is by allowing your body to make NAD and store it rather than degrading it as we get older. We need to test a lot of different combinations include Animan, include, uh, there's one called rapamycin, which is a little bit more risky and toxic, but there are better molecules in development. The question is, what is the best combination? And do you use it with exercise and fasting? Um, or is it bad to combine them all together? We don't know yet. That's a good question, too, that I wanted to ask you, because one of the things that came out of the podcast was input from some other people that I know that are nutrition experts and performance experts that were skeptical about metformin. And they were saying that metformin, although it may have uh, an anti-aging effect, it actually decreases physical performance in athletes. Well, that there is a study that shows that. Uh, and resveratrol, too, actually, uh, really? can, can prevent the, the great gains from heart exercise. So here's the solution uh, that I think uh, is worth trying, a solution, and that is uh, a theme that, that I have in my book and in my, uh, my research, and that is we don't want to be doing everything every day necessarily. We want to pulse it. We want to 
shock the body and let it recover. We know that you can't just exercise. I mean, some people who've been on this show run 100 miles every every weekend, but generally you want to hit it hard and let it recover, hit it hard, let it recover. So what I am planning to do and actually started doing is on days that I'm exercising and recovering, I don't take metformin. And then when I'm just sitting around or on a plane, I do. And that way I think that my body can have the best of both worlds. So metformin is a, a derivative of a plant molecule, the French lilac, so it's, it's not a crazy molecule, it's pretty natural. But what it does is many things in the body. Scientists will quite annoyingly argue about it for, for they have for the past 40 years. Um, so there's no correct answer, but what I think is going on is that metformin is interfering with the mitochondria, mitochondria in the cell. Mitochondria, are the, we call them battery packs. They're basically making chemical energy. Without that chemical energy, we'd be dead in about 20 seconds. So we need that for life. So metformin interrupts that energy production in the mitochondria. Uh, but you need the mitochondria to amplify after you've exercised. So they're, they're antagonizing each other. So why does metformin work? By inhibiting the mitochondria, the body gets a signal that it doesn't have enough chemical energy. It's not making enough. So it expands the number of mitochondria. These are ancient remnants of bacteria that entered our cells. And we have less if we sit around and like we are now, and we have more if we exercise. And metformin, by telling the body, oh, shit, we're running out of energy, the body responds and makes more mitochondria, just like exercise does. Mm. But I think if you're taking uh, metformin and exercising, that inhibition is preventing the benefits somehow of what you get with exercise.